1706-1, to receive apologies for absence. Apologies have been received from both Councillor Clark and Councillor Burgess. Thank you. 1706 to note declaration of interest and request for dispensation to discuss or discuss and vote on a matter in which a member or co-opted member has a disclosure or pecuniary or non-pecuniary interest. I'd like it to be noted that I was a member of the Friends of Antworth, uh, Friends of Meriton Road Park, and a member of Highness as well in the past. Well, I'm not a member of it. Yeah. Hey, HME, yes. Yeah, okay, thank you. Any other declarations? <coughs> no? Okay, we'll move Can you use your microphone, please, Councillor? Tolba. The green one. Yeah. Well, did you? Did you hear it? No, I didn't hear it. What's that again? I presume I'm alive. Sure. Um, would you not think that you had an interest to declare because you were chairman of the Standard Park? I can't hear you, sorry. Mm -hmm. Councillor Tolva has asked Councillor Smith, does he have an interest as chair of Stanley Hall Park? Where's Stanley Hall Park? All, <coughs> all I can say is that I don't understand why being the chair of one park would have an interest in a, would mean that I have some sort of interest in another park. Okay. But I'd be happy to hear what your logic is behind that. Well, then it's up to you to declare the interest if you think there is one. Well, I don't know. Is it one? Perhaps you could say why you thought there might be one. Well, there's no point. <coughs> okay. Have you got an interest in the park, Council? No, no. Not in Merritt Road Park? I'm sorry? Not in Mason Road Park? No. You don't attend any meetings? I attend meetings, yes. Right. But you don't have an interest? I'm not a member of the group. Um, uh, invited to attend meetings. So you attend the meetings, but you're not, attend, don't have an interest? I attend some meetings. I attend the meetings of a number of organisations. Right, well, we're not discussing those organisations tonight, are we? No, I'm just drawing that similarity between, between that. Right. Just because I attend meetings of groups doesn't mean that I have an interest in those groups. Sense of declaring interest. I'm 
sure that you have associations and contacts with many members of the community, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you have an interest in the sense of declaring interests. I, Not as in attending meetings, no. I, I similarly have contacts and what have you with various members of the Hanford community. But I would state if I was having meetings with somebody that, I, that was going to be discussed in this forum, that I would state that I attend meetings and surely what would be an interest. Would it not? I don't believe it would be an interest. Perhaps the clerk would like to give us an indication of what constitutes an interest. Peculiar uh, interest is you would have a financial interest in the organisation. Whereas a non pecuniary interest is you have a non financial interest in the organisation. And what examples of that would be what? Um, if you were a volunteer <coughs> for a group or held membership to a group, those, those are really non pecuniary interests. And they're still non pecuniary, they're not financial interests. Just, just so that I understand this completely, because I am a member of another group, I might have had an interest, was your thoughts, but because you attend meetings of a group, you don't have an interest. I'm not a member of... You're not a member, you don't have an interest. Right, okay. I don't okay, understand well, it. Thank you, councillors. We'll move on to the next item, please. To approve and sign the minutes um, open for I thought that was the open forum, sorry. Um, <laughs> Good start. <laughs> uh, the open forum, can I please have your name and state that the item is on the agenda? Yes. Roger Small, I'm a South Ward resident. Um, my comments relate to item 13 the provision of new uh, rubbish bins. I'd like to say that I endorse thoroughly uh, the Council's uh, suggestion to put a rubbish bin uh, by the side of the footbridge over the railway. That usually is an absolute disgrace. Absolute disgrace. Secondly, I'd like to suggest that for the spare um, rubbish bin, but that might go at the coppice way end of footpath 91. There's another guy present in the audience here who, together with me, very often takes a plastic bag along and picks up all the beer cans, half-eaten uh, meals, uh, cigarette packs, etc., etc., etc. There is a traffic of people who come from uh, the stores, uh, principally, I guess, Tesco's, carrying uh, their takeaway meals and drinks with them, and by the time they get to the end of the footpath at Coppice Way, they just drop everything there. It's, it's an absolute disgrace, and I would recommend that uh, uh, okay. the project be put there. Thank you. We'll take that into consideration. <coughs> Any more comments, questions? Julie Smith, I'd just like to make the comment that going back to previous um, item that in the past anybody who's ever asked to join Friends of Meriton Road Park has been told that the only people who can go to meetings are members so I don't understand how Councillor Tolver can say he's not a member when it's been stated on numerous occasions mainly when Kerry Burgess was trying to join and has been told that the only people who can attend meetings are members. Thank you, Mrs. Smith. I can't comment because I don't know what the makeup of these no, friends of American Road Park. The constitution of the Friends of American Park says that councillors may not be members. Thank you, Councillor Tolder. Any more questions? I'm Ross East Ward. Yeah, I'd just like to come back on the point that Julie just brought up. Um, we have had new members in the Friends of Meriton Road Park, and the Constitution does not say that we cannot have new members or that members, uh, 
non-members cannot come to the meeting, but it does say that people can come by request. And on the point of um, Kerry Burgess, there are reasons which we didn't bring into public domain of why it was a group decision that uh, Kerry Burgess would not be invited to the meeting. I can't comment on Councillor Burgess because she's not here to uh, explain that. However, I will inform Councillor Burgess of your comments. Thank you. Any more questions? Same person, I'm more peaceful. Uh, on the uh, agenda item 170616, um, I trust that the council um, <coughs> will not be able to make a decision on this request before uh, they have all the documentation and information that has been going backwards and forwards for quite a few years now between HMES, Cheshire East Council, and so Friends of Military Mill Park and members of the wider community. Okay, thank you. Any other comments from the public? Can I move on? Thank you. <coughs> 17064, to approve and sign the minutes of HPC Council meeting of the 10th of January. We've all <coughs> had these minutes. Can we go through them page by page? And councillors, if you could let me know if you have any comments. Page one. Just me? No. Thank you. Page two. to approve and sign the minutes of the HPC Finance Committee meeting of the 19th of January. I will do exactly the same. Page one, any comments? <coughs> page Sorry. two. Uh, yes, it is. I'm just looking at the item that goes over the page. Uh, which was 170304, Chair. Yeah. Yeah, I have a point on that to make. I um, referred this item to the next full council meeting. Uh, the reason being, and the reason that I told the meeting then was uh, because I wanted the public to be aware of what was being spent and why. And it was at that point that Councillor Thompson said, you mean rent a mob? And referring to the um, public. Just like that to be noted, please. That's an amendment that, to the minutes. Yes, and that he, he said that, and then he left the building. Chair, yeah. will I respond to that? We are here to actually agree on the minutes, not to amend them as such. Yeah. We are therefore, we are yeah. therefore here to decide are these minutes accurate or not. Yeah. If they are not accurate, then we should actually say they are not accurate. We're voting on the accuracy of the minutes, not the content. Yes, but it was requested at the time that we needed to report. No, it was not. <laughs> yes, it was. I'm sorry, <laughs> Councillor Thompson. I requested that that comment you made was minuted, and there were other councillors in the room, and I did ask you to apologise, and you just I wasn't there to apologise because I walked straight out, <laughs> as you know. <laughs> From I walked straight out, so therefore I wasn't there to apologise. I got up and went. Can I just comment from the previous um, discussions we had when uh, Ben Brooks was clerk? Uh, he made it quite clear that you can't record verbatim. Verbatim is the word. If you insist. You can't record verbatim comments into minutes after um, the event. Excuse me, but I asked the uh, parish clerk to note this down in the minutes. It's in his notes and he failed to do it. 
and that's why it was being brought to These are actually what's being voted upon, Chair. Did you omit it? I, I, I've omitted it. I've recorded council decisions. Um, if you want to make an amendment, you can propose the amendment and vote on it. Okay. That's a different matter. We're actually, actually voting on the That's city of I'd like to propose the amendment. Very included. Okay. Debating. We've got a seconder for that. I'll second it purely on the basis that I, I believe all the minutes should be accurate, regardless of who said what. And I've always agreed with that in every set of minutes. No, no personal no idea. reason. Okay. All those in favour <coughs> to have the minutes of the Finance Committee amended. What is the proposal, Councillor Smith? The proposal to be amended, as I said, that uh, I explained why I wanted it to be moved to the full uh, Council meeting. Uh, because I wanted the public to be aware of it, which is when Councillor Thompson referred to the public as, you mean, rentable. Okay, thank you. All those in favour of the amendment, please. <laughs> Against? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Are there any other comments on that page two of two? <coughs> Can I have a proposal to accept the minutes of the Finance Committee subject to those amendments? Seconded. Yeah. All those in favour? Against? Thank you. Seventeen oh six six. To approve and sign the accounts for payments. Are there <coughs> any comments from any councillor, please? Did we get an updated cost on the telephone and broadband yet, actually? Sorry, uh, um, it was a... no, it comes at the end of the month, oh. and that's for this month. Uh, last month it was £51. Oh, okay. no. Any comments from any of the councillor? Mm -hmm. Can I, I have... need to change that out a bit there on that. Yeah. Can I have a proposal to accept the income and expenditure and payments? Second them. All those in favour? Thank you. 17067, report from the clerk. Forgive me, I've also got a cough and cold as well, so I sound very bunged up. Uh, can everybody hear me without me having to use the microphone? Yeah. yeah. Okay. General uh, matters. The CCTV system continues to function well and correctly, and for the month of January, I've received three separate requests from Cheshire Police to review footage as part of ongoing investigations. Obviously, we can't discuss them. Uh, that's right, isn't it, Gary? Yeah. Um, the SID has been deployed on all three entrance roads to Hanforth uh, for a period of 10 days each and all this recorded data has been sent to Cheshire Police and a review of the volume of data of traffic passing through Hanforth can now take place. Uh, consultation on the main modifications to the local plan commences, commenced on the 6th of February. Uh, for a period of six weeks, closing on the 20th of March 2017. So there's another consultation period, but I don't know how widely known that is. Um, the Parish Council's new current account with Barclays Bank has now been opened. £75,000, finally, finally, yes. £75,000 has been transferred from the current account. £50,000 has <coughs> been, sorry? Co-op. Yeah, from the co-op, yeah. And £50 has been deposited from a local retailer as a donation towards the 2016 Christmas event, and £123.50 deposited from the 2016 pantomime receipts. The 2016 Christmas pantomime raised £218 in total, 
£94.50 was expended on refreshments for the children attending, a breakdown of attendees from the two performances comprised 112 adults and 212 children. Um, this is just a note to councillors that under item 170612 of the agenda, uh, I only had one quote at the time and two more um, have come in. I've emailed them to you, you have got hard copies. Um, sorry they've taken a while longer than expected. Um, on the neighbourhood plan, neighbourhood plan group has sent out questionnaires to all residents and businesses in Hanford. Uh, responses to this uh, that have been returned are so far into the hundreds. The closing date for responses is the 22nd of February. Also, three public consultation events have taken place with good attendance in each case. Um, finally, Councillor Burgess has <coughs> asked me to say that she does give her apologies over the next couple of months. She's due to give birth next month and so won't be able to make March and April's meeting. Um, but she's going to try and attempt to make ones after that. Um, <laughs> um, I think that's everything. Just to let all councillors know, I think I've explained, I think everybody knows, I'm going away uh, on the 23rd, from the 23rd of February, and I won't be back until the 13th of March. Um, Trying not to smile. <laughs> I know, yeah. Um, <laughs> I know, I know. Um, if there's any items for next time's agenda, please get them to me as quickly as you can next week, and then I can set the agenda and get everything sorted for when I leave. Best that you fire an email to that effect. I will do. Any comments from the clerk's report? Um. <laughs> Regarding the. Um, CCTV, um, no, not the CCTV, the, the speed one. Yes. We need to set a date to discuss that. Yeah, absolutely. If you want to email me um, and do you want to keep Brian in the loop, it and we'll get together. Bad, and if you want to, I'm happy before I go away to make a date yeah. over the next six working days. If you want to have a look at the volume. Uh, traffic. It, but it's going to be circulated to all councillors. It will be circulated to all councillors. I think they want to have a look at some more in-depth information that the device can actually pick up as well. Yeah, yeah, you'll get it all circulated, yeah. but yeah. I think they just want to have a, okay. a more in-depth look, <laughs> which is... Thank you. Thank you for that, Ashley. 17.068. Uh, this is a report from the Chairman of the Neighbourhood Plan, Steering Group concerning the designation of the neighbourhood area. Hopefully you should all have been circulated with uh, the information that us as councillors have been given. Um, any councillors, do you have any questions on the report, please? Are we talking about this one? Yes. Uh, no. Oh. That one was circulated. Yeah, but this, this is gone. Can... The chairman give his report, this one here first, one. his report, yes. and then we'll have a look at that. Right. Yeah. Do you want to hear what yeah. Good evening everyone, ladies and gentlemen. Um, this is a rather working report, I have to admit, but I thought it important to present all the facts of the matter. The steering group first met on the 23rd of November. On the 2nd of December, uh, we made contact with Mr. Tom Evans, who is the Cheshire East Council Neighbourhood Planning Manager. And he encouraged the group to submit an application for the designation of a neighbourhood plan area. And he suggested that we use the application written by the parish of Eton as a model. We subsequently informed uh, Mr. Evans that um, we would like the transposition of site CS49 from the style neighbourhood area to that of Hanford. And Mr Evans replied that we would need to negotiate that with style. <clears throat> On the 5th of December, uh, Ashley wrote to the clerk of uh, Style Parish Council requesting that transposition. On the 7th of December, 
we drafted our neighborhood plan um, area application <coughs> using uh, Tom Evans's model. Knowing that the steering group wanted to include all the land within the parish borders, Tom provided the appropriate map. Ashley then sent an application for the designation of our neighborhood area to Mr. Evans, together with a covering letter explaining that Hanforth wished to negotiate with Style re the inclusion of site CS49 uh, in the Hanforth neighborhood area. On the 12th of December, Mr. Evans wrote to say that the Hanforth application had been processed and that it would be mounted on the Cheshire website for a period of public consultation acting, uh, ending on the 13th of January. The period of public consultation was later extended to the 20th of January to allow for the Christmas break. On the 28th of December, we received a letter from Style saying no deal, they did not want to uh, transfer site CS49 to Hanford. I'd like to make the point to members of the public and to councillors that we tried our best to uh, get site CS49 moved into our neighbourhood area and I'm afraid we were prevented from so doing. On the 26th of January, we held a meeting here with uh, Tom Evans and he was asked whether there had been any objections to the proposed Hanworth neighbourhood area. He replied no, and that response was later confirmed in a report which he uh, sent through to us. <laughs> it would therefore seem that removal of a substantial piece of land from the neighbourhood area by Cheshire East Council does not comprise an objection to the original application. Very strange, in my view. On the 3rd of February, the group was informed, uh, informed by Councillor Ainsley Arnold who is the portfolio uh, holder for housing, and by uh, Tom Evans, that Cheshire East had removed the North Cheshire Growth Village site from the Hanforth neighbourhood area. Now, in many ways, that makes the task of the steering group a little bit easier because we don't have to get into uh, so much detail with regard to the layout and the uh, nature of the buildings to go up <coughs> on the um, Garden Village site. But it does, of course, start to raise questions about finances. And the paragraph which then follows um, were our thoughts on, on, on what might happen. If you assume that uh, Cheshire's Council have adopted the CIL levy rather than the old S106 system, what will Hanforth receive in terms of the still <coughs> monies from the Garden Village? We will certainly not be getting a 25% share of the still money because planning applications for the growth village uh, will have been submitted before any neighbourhood plan comes into force. Remember, it's going to take us 12 to 18 months to get that plan up and running and adopted. Under the law, Hanforth, as host parish, must receive um, a 15% share of the sill, which is currently estimated to be about 1.5 million. And that's under the statutory instrument number 982, para 59A. Please read it if you will. You have to read from para to sub para to sub para to sub para and so on. And that 15% share will occur irrespective of whether or not we submit a neighbourhood plan. The second major point from um, Councillor Arnold's letter was that our referendum on the local uh, the neighbourhood plan will extend to areas outside Hanford. And that could, of course, mean that many persons who have not contributed to our neighbourhood plan will be able to pass judgment on it. On the 7th of February, the steering group sent a letter to Councillor Arnold <coughs> requesting responses in writing to a number of issues that were raised in his initial letter to uh, the group. On the 13th of February, and this explains why uh, my report was a bit late in being pre-circulated to councillors, we received a reply from Councillor Arnold. And the important elements of that reply uh, are that the council is currently working on its CIL levy and anticipates adoption of a charging schedule early in 2018. 
CIL can only be levied yeah. on those applications that are determined after the charging schedule has been adopted. For those schemes dealt with beforehand, development contributions will be sought through Section 106 agreements. If the site is subject to a CIL levy, 15% of such a levy will be paid directly to the Parish Council for investment in local infrastructure projects. So you see, things get quite complicated as, as regards timing. Uh, things depend on when planning applications go in for the Gardens Village and when um, Cheshire's Council adopt the CIL system rather than the Section 106 system. The second uh, major point from uh, Councillor Arnold's reply was that at the end of the neighbourhood plan process, a local referendum will be held and an external examiner must assess whether the referendum should extend beyond, beyond the neighbourhood area. He goes on to say, excluding the garden village from our neighbourhood area avoids this potential situation whereby residents in other communities will be asked to vote on a handful neighbourhood plan. I still feel there's a bit of uncertainty in that area as to whether that would happen or not. But in summary, I'd like to say it seems that the neighbourhood area has in fact been imposed upon us. And if you look at the map of neighbourhood plans in Cheshire East, it tends to confirm that. Our parish area now has a green segment to it and a white segment to it. The white segment being the uh, garden village side. However, if you look at the Cheshire East website for the Handforth Neighbourhood Plan, Regulation 7, Neighbourhood Area Designation, it shows stage not reached. We asked for clarification whether further action was required either by Cheshire East Council or by the steering group, and got the reply from Councillor Arnold that no further action is necessary. I checked Council's website tonight before leaving for this meeting, it still shows report the, the report uh, stage not reached. Accordingly, I sent an email to um, Tom Evans asking for more clarification. So at the moment, the steering group are unsure whether we have reached the, uh, the stage uh, under Regulation 7 where the neighbourhood area designation has been set in concrete. <coughs> so I think that's all I want to say at, at the moment. Um, I was elected as the chairperson of the steering group, elected not being the right word, I think. I was cajoled into doing it, and I'm looking for any excuse to get rid of the job. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Dr. Small. I think yeah. you're doing an excellent job. Can I have comments from any councillors, please? Chair, yeah, uh, yeah, Mr. Small. Um, when you mentioned about other areas, you talk about uh, other areas within Cheshire East or beyond. Do you have any oh, inclination? Because uh, it'd be like beyond. Stockport, beyond. you know what I mean? Yes. Or, um, and across, across Winslow. Across Borough Brown Bandits. Yes. Right. And, right. So, for example, Greater Manchester can comment on our... Yes, at the moment, yes. Things, Greater Manchester could comment on our neighbourhood plan. Would it not be an idea to inquire of them if they have an in any intention to do so? Uh, well, what I'm going to say is that we, as, as you, I think, know already, yes. we are trying to consult with all manners of individuals and groups. Yeah, but I think this is important to sort of... As part of that process, sooner or later, we will have to consult with those preparing neighbourhood plans in uh, style, we've already done that to some extent, uh, Woodford, uh, Wilmser, and so on, and parts of Greater Manchester. Right. Have you, um, and, and just a, a secondary point to that, um, the fact that he says uh, that there's a possibility of other neighbourhoods uh, seeking to comment on our neighbourhood plan, would you be um, interested in that? inquiring as to whether we will be commenting on those other areas plans. Because obviously style in particular would be too keen if they are the neighbourhood plan and you were saying well, I, 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 <laughs> if you get the I, point. I, I don't know whether it's appropriate to say this at the moment, but I know that style 
uh, really do not want us to assume control of CS49, and they are not keen to have any uh, road access to that site coming from style. I, I understand that, but I mean, if they're going to be asked to comment on it, and we can't comment on CS49, but they may have a comment as to regards <coughs> and for Foot's neighbourhood plan, we should be saying or suggesting to them we may be wishing to comment on your neighbourhood plan if you wish to comment on ours. I suspect that site CS49 is going to be processed rapidly, like yes. the Garden Village, because by so doing, Cheshire East can draw more money from that site oh, yes, I than letting Perfectly it well. yeah. I understand. Take, take its time. Yeah. But um, therefore, I mean, I don't know what we can do about this where they decided to basically annex part of Hamforth into the never regions of God knows where. Maybe that's a letter to the MP and to the Secretary of State. There's one important point to make, I think, that um, the Garden Village site might be removed from our neighbourhood area, but it's not removed from our parish boundaries. Exactly. That, that is so, concrete fact. That so therefore we should be... Perhaps it may be an issue to raise with the Secretary of State in that case, or the and or the MP, as to what Cheshire is doing here. For clarification. Um, we have a lawyer in the group, mm -hmm. and he and I have gone through the relevant sections of the local or the relevant section of the yes. Localism Act and uh, um, a relevant uh, statutory instrument with a fine tooth comb, yes. we, we can tell you that Cheshire East are acting totally within the law, right. and there is no uh, method of appeal against their decision to remove the garden um, village site from right. uh, our neighbourhood area. Right. No, no appeal. Okay, thank you. So, is that so, the estimation you would put on the amount of CIO money we would receive is probably zero. Now. It depends on whether, this, whether the CIL system uh, is in place uh, uh, before um, planning applications are submitted for the uh, uh, British side. Well, it's worth 1.5 million to Cheshire East to adjust the timing of the applications. Oh, you bet. And the, uh, the CIL. You bet. So that they gain the one million and a half. You bet. And, uh, well, you bet. Yeah, They've already guess, guess what I think the joint chances are. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I'm quite aware. Dr. Small, can I just ask you, if they did that, isn't that unlawful or illegal? As um, I've discussed this, and because the SIL money or the Section 106 money is where the parish council, we will get that money regardless. You will. Thank you. No, sorry, we only get CIO money. Yeah, 1.5 million. And you get that 1.5 million of CIL money. No, if, no, if, no. No, what? Let me explain again. Yeah. You have to think about which system is operating at the time when planning applications are submitted. If it's the old S106 system, then nothing has really changed, has it? You know, if a development goes up within your parish, your, the parish council uh, is entitled to receive that. S106 money is. Sorry, we'll come back to that in a second. Well, the Section yes. 106 money, the, the, how much there is and what it's spent on is in the power of Cheshire Reese, not the Parish Council. Yeah, I, I, I think yeah. I, I believe that at the moment as well. Yeah, but if we have an neighbourhood plan, hmm? well, have a neighborhood plan in place and Section 106 money is still available, does the neighbourhood plan? Only, only if the CIL system is in place. Yes. CIL, I think it applies to the CIL, but not, not to S106. Mm. S106 is the same old system, as far as I understand it. Well, it's a pity we haven't got any of our ward councillors here to confirm just exactly what Section 106 money is spent on, because I know they are holding an awful lot of money in Cheshire East yeah. that should be spent recently. on handful. I asked one of them recently, and he wasn't able to give me a straight answer. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you. Well, I think I've told you what the system has been. Mm -hmm. Section 106 money is determined by 
Cheshire East End conjunction, conjunction with the developers. Yeah. And it's spent on the infrastructure applicable to, more or less applicable to that planning application, as determined by Cheshire East. So it's, it's, if, if that's the system that applies to have at East, then Cheshire East, I would suggest, would use that section 106 money to build the infrastructure required for Hanford East. I have copies of uh, Councillor Arnold's response to our letter of repost. So if anybody wants the full text of this uh, response, please see me and you may have a copy. Thank you. It's on the website as well. The Cheshire East yeah. website. Yeah. Yeah. It's on the Cheshire East website. Any other comments from councillors? <coughs> To consider us a response to councillor to uh, councillor Arnold's letter. I know the steering group have already replied, um, but I wasn't in a position to do a letter without having the backing of our councillors. However, that's the motion. Sure. That's why it's on the agenda now. That's what I will be asking the councillor. Chair, may I say that your steering group um, has to work with Cheshire East uh, councillors and with their officers such as the neighbourhood planning manager. Uh, I think it would not be uh, a good idea to fire off a really violent response to Cheshire East or its officers for the sake of you being able to work with them. You said it was going to be a violent response? <laughs> <laughs> Stop the words. I think, I think <laughs> Um, I'm sure it'll be an extremely democratic letter. Um, anyway, it might be. It's got to be proposed and agreed by the councillors here. So the proposal is, do we, as a council, respond to Councillor Arnold's <coughs> letter, or do we leave it in the hands of the steering group? I think we're going to need to see how this develops for another month at least. I, I, I agree. I think, but I needed to put it on because there was going to be a neighbourhood um, steering report. I think rather than have a knee-jerk reaction, we should await to see what comes from Cheshire East and to see how the steering group are coping with it before we then um, put a, a motion on the agenda again. Yeah, Everybody in agreement with that? We'll defer it to the next meeting. Yeah. yeah. Can we defer it? Can everybody in agreement? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. We propose that, sorry. Um, You'll propose yeah. it, right, second. Thank you very much. Thank you for your, all your work <coughs> this morning. It's much appreciated, and the steering group as well. And they are all volunteers and they're not paid. 17069. I have to say that because somebody stopped me in the village and accused me of being paid. I wish there was to be a millionaire now. Um, 17069, uh, to consider the request received from Hampers of Hope Working Group to make a donation totaling £1,025.80p for the financial year 1617, referred to full council from the HPC Finance Committee. And it's Councillor Smith that will be speaking to this motion. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. The, it's very short to speak. I wanted to make sure that it was put forward before uh, the members of the public so that they were aware of what was being uh, agreed. Um, my view was that the request was for equipment which would be kept on site, on site at the uh, Wim's Long View premises um, in order to save any damage perhaps being, being made to those uh, pieces of equipment whilst moving them from one car to another or taking them from one place to another. My view was that um, we're, we're funding, um, if, if we were say funding a, you know, um, a sports or activity teacher to go around all three schools and we were giving by them equipment for it, would we buy equipment to be kept at each school? Or would we expect that person to take the equipment with them when they went to the different schools? That's 
uh, what we've been asked for is to provide separate kit for each outlet or each site that uh, Campus of Hope or the Hope Centre actually have. That's what I've had uh, a disagreement with. I'll obviously be uh, quite happy to take the majority view of the council, uh, obviously, and uh, that was what I wanted to put forward. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Any other comments from any of the councillors, please? Can I just raise one um, on the sheet that we were sent when we discussed this in the finance committee? Uh, you brought up the fact that they wanted um, a DAB radio. Uh, did either yourself or Councillor Tolver advise the Hampers of Hope people about the that they're not able to have the mu was it music before twelve o'clock in that room? I don't know whether. I um, did said so that we now asking them to check about licensing and so on. I do. Right. Uh, it's just because it's uh, it's it's the one of the items that's in the amount that we're looking at. So do we need to remove that item? Because until we know that we've I got thought I thought in the financial uh, <coughs> meeting that we agreed to not approve that. Or am I wrong? Uh, I thought we didn't make any decision. No, when we didn't make any decision. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And also, um, do Hampers of Hope have a secure cabinet to lock away the um, um, materials and equipment that they've requested? Yes, I do. So. Yes. They do. I told us that one Okay. Um, because I've recently been contacted by a um, contour surveyor, and they have to come and do pack testing on all the electrical equipment, so we need to make that available. But any cooking utensils that are still in Wormslow View, if they're not removed by next Friday, when the surveyor is coming back out, he will have to, he will be asking for them to be removed and not left on the premises. I don't have that authority. So uh, if there's somebody that you know, a Tampers of Hope, that can remove that equipment. I did send you both an email and I copied you. What the, yes, I did. I sent yourself and Councillor Tom. Okay. Um, I received my copy of it. Did you have a copy of it? I received my copy of it. I was CC'd. Yes. Yeah. Um, we don't have any copy of it. Well, apparently there's a George Foreman grill, there's a oh, hot plate, and there's something else on top of the cabinet that the guy pointed out to me and said, is this yours? I said, no. Recently? Yeah, last week. They were there tonight. Mm. I understood that all been removed. No, they haven't. He came out, uh, yeah, I was there last Tuesday mm -hmm. with him and the other people, she had a hot plate and she's had to remove it as well. The only thing you'll allow, and it's got to be pack tested, is the urn and the kettle. So does, do the two parties know who is doing this so that they can be in touch with each other? The well, testing I, people and, I mean, you, you obviously in contact with these people. But have right. they been in touch with... All of the no, because we don't know what equipment they've got in the cupboard. He asked me to get the list. Shouldn't well, it be that? Shouldn't, shouldn't the conversation be between the testers and the people who may have? Yeah, you know, because we have the keys. Uh, well, I, I'm responsible. I do. I let people in to do the repairs. To do what they want. Mr. Contour. Yes. So you, have a, you have a formal contract with them, whatever. I don't have a formal contract, I do it because they're at, they know where I live and I can go and open up it's in the day. Legal situation. Oh, for it's goodness sake, Councillor Tolver. Oh, Look, this is excuse a, this me, is a legal test. excuse me, no it isn't. It is a legal test and I would contact Compass of Hope respectfully to leave your equipment out. I'll let you know when the guys come in and then you can have it pack tested. Okay? Well, they can't cook well, there. I've been aware of it the last few months that we have been having cold meals. No, I, I'm not saying you haven't. I can't but, understand what, but why this George Foreman brings that. Well, I don't either. And uh, there's a hot plate. The guy <coughs> pointed it out to me 
and he said, what's in these cupboards? I said, I don't know. I don't have access to it. So if you're going to have a screen and a laptop and anything else that's electrical, it has to be pack tested. Thank you. Chair, yeah. <coughs> shouldn't it be like Councillor Thomas pointed out, that if contour homes have got any concerns with the use of equipment, they should be contacting the users? I haven't got a contact for Hampers of Hope, otherwise I would have put this gentleman in touch with her. I haven't got a contact. That's why I sent yourself and Councillor Tolver an email copying in the person. And mm. Councillor Smith's had it, and the parish clerk's had it. I will check, but I didn't yes, know as please. far as I could see if they get anything. Because I didn't have <coughs> contact for Hampers of Hope, but I will get the contact details at the end of the meeting. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Mm. <coughs> so the motion is to consider the request. Um, if we haven't actually decided yet, I would like us to reconsider um, approving the request for the money for the Christmas meals that I was about to have furnished. Or a number of is, is that your motion, Councillor? Uh, yes. Seconder. No second. Are these for Christmas meals? Yes, there was a, an item for something over hundred pounds, about hundred and fifteen pounds. Hundred twenty. Yeah. Hundred twenty. Some there somewhere. The same council that we we weren't funding Christmas meals. That's what was discussed. Yes, but I don't yeah. think there was a decision made about any of these things specifically. Yes, I take it this is one from fifteen sixteen, is it? That's right at the very top. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that. Is this item, fifth, uh, item right at the very top of the spreadsheet? It was for Christmas meal £119.50. I'm not able to read 25. 25. There's, one, there's one in the 2016 2017, which is Christmas lunch, £116.35. Yeah. But then there's one in the budget for 2017 to 18 for £120. Yeah, we're, we're doing the 20, 16, 16, 16. 1st year first, aren't we? Yeah. 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 So that would be for the first one then. My view of it, as I've said all along, is that we don't pay for Christmas lunch for. Uh, okay, I've got a proposal. I've got a second. Yeah, can we have a vote on it, please? Who's in favour? Against. Two. Abstaining. Chair, may, may I point out something here? Um, I noticed um, in another report regarding the uh, what was brought in Clark's report regarding the uh, pantomime. And we paid for £94 for refreshments for the children, um, which I've got no quibble with whatsoever. And yet we are now quibbling over £120 for people who probably won't have a Christmas dinner. You know what I mean? The, 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 <coughs> so, so it seems to me a little bit of, little bit of right. one and so, not the other. So, it's it's yeah. Scrooge, yeah. yes. My, my understanding was yeah. the money from the pantomime that was put for the tickets funded the refreshments. Well, if it's a tie vote, I, I don't, we don't pay for Christmas meals for anybody else. And as for the pantomime, uh, the cost of the tickets that we sold covered the refreshments. I'm aware of that. But so what, what are you saying? I'm just saying it, it, Is this £120 going to be covered it. by the people who are, are going to be lunching? As far as I'm aware, they do have to put a contribution in. Do we really want to be seen not paying for Christmas lunches for some of the most deprived people in Hanforth? Are they the most deprived people in Hanforth, Councillor Tolman? Because I understand there are a number of volunteers here. They do lunches on a Wednesday. They have a Thursday group. Who are these people that are so destitute? Because I understand that I would willingly give more money to uh, provide hampers 
for these people as opposed to a meal. You're talking about four pounds per house, per household in Hampshire. But you're saying that you to fund these Christmas meals. It's £120. You quibbled about the pantomime councillor. Uh, no, you didn't. Uh, you quibbled. Oh, you did. Yeah. Yeah. Comments. In the point. Well, I'm sorry. Okay. Those sorts of things. It's a tie vote. It's a tie vote. Okay. And, the um, chair has the... And if I have the casting vote, I can be called Scrooge Samson. I am voting against it. But... As a, good, a gesture of goodwill, I will willingly, if I am chair, give you a contribution towards a Christmas lunch out of the chair's fund. Thank you. I need a minute now. It won't be £120, but I will give you a contribution. Thank you. And any other chairs that want to give money, please come and speak to me. Thank you. 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 And uh, if you speak to me after, I'll let you know. Thank you. Can we put okay. the minutes, please, Ashley? Yes. Um, I thank the chair for her offer, and I'll make up the difference. Thank you, Councillor Tolliver. Could I ask that we need to vote on the motion now? Oh. <laughs> Is that for both last year and this year? Well, I can't say about next year because I don't know who's going to be chair. But um, for last year, I'll definitely give you a contribution. That's fine. Right. Now then, the motion that's on the table. <coughs> Considerable request debated by the Hampers Boat Working Party. This is for 1617. This is for the final tree, yeah, 1617. Mm -hmm. Outside, well, outside of the Christmas lunch, uh, the rest of it can be paid for, I assume. Um, can we make that subject to you getting a licence for the dog radio? Did you know you needed a licence? Um, I knew premises needed it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. Chair, is that will they need the licence if music's not allowed? It, there's no music until allowed until after 12 o'clock. No, not there after that. Okay. So back down. So the last the Christmas lunch and the DAB radio. Yeah. Less the DAB radio. And the Christmas lunch. That wasn't the part of it. That's it's a completely separate time. Well. No, we Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so do we have a proposal for the rest of it? Mind us the DAB radio. Carry, carry on, Mike. I didn't, didn't think that. Oh, sorry. Thank you for I'll second it. Okay. And who's in favour? Against? And abstaining? Moving on. 170610, motion to accept the report from the auditor regarding item 163512 of the December the 13th meeting. Councillor Smith, I understand that you will be talking to this motion. Let's go, Mr. Chair. Uh, as we know, Ashley's had a uh, report back from the auditors. Uh, where they have gone through the issues that have been raised. Um, the first one, the pants on deposit. Um, the query was about why Maxine Smith has mainly been used as a contract, etc., when she's not a member of HBC. Uh, the result was that uh, the auditor found that Maxine Smith, the support service officer for Cheshire East Council, with the previous clerk arranged the pantomime of the deposit invoice for £240 pounds is actually the name of Maxine Smith, and the council clerk and the joint names on the deposit are followed by the parish council name and address. So it is clear that the council is the client, is the response from the auditor. The conclusion of the recommendation is no significant issues arising, however the council should ensure that purchase invoices are only addressed to the council. Uh, she felt that that was a 
something that was out of control because it arrived, but we don't know that. That's uh, the first item. Second item, £17.66 petty cash. The occurrence was, did not see a petty cash breakdown action, need a petty cash breakdown. £17.66 paid to the previous clerk in February 2016 to top up petty cash to 500 The petty cash breakdown is in the record with a complete analysis. The auditor also tested the current petty cash system to prove it agrees to physical cash at the end of January 2017. Uh, petty cash analysis showed a current a carried forward value at £222.05 and the locked receptacle was cashed out and agreed to this figure. Uh, the fact that the auditor, the person auditing uh, the 2016-17 figures, uh, did not see a petty cash breakdown, uh, but it was found to be perfectly correct by the external auditor. And uh, next one, the observation was that Councillor Smith as chair of uh, authorised an interim petty cash payment of £500. Who gave him the authorisation? Uh, cash was seemingly drawn down, but no record showing what, to whom, or where it's been paid. Can Councillor Smith advise the council as to his action in this matter, as there is no record log for the guy who requirements? The result is that the financial regulations state that the chair of finance will at any time authorise a payment into the petty cash. Um, I was surprised that uh, Councillor Thompson weren't aware of that, having been a chair of finance previously. But if the petty cash needs replenishing, then it can be done by the, finance, uh, the chair of finance, uh, as in line with the financial regulations. Uh, the order of payments for the accounts for the 8th of December includes the £500 and the order was approved by HPC on 8th of December 2015 and is signed by the chair and one of the councillors. Conclusion of the external auditor, no issues arising. Next item, cheque for pound replaces cheque number in favour of Woodsall Town Council. No record as to what the money was used for or paid to whom. There's an email to the clerk requesting investigation. The results of the auditor was the cheque is noted in the order of payments of accounts. So we could have looked at that. And the replacement cheque was made to Lindo Scouts for £400. The voucher evidences the donation was a contribution for the refurbishment of the scout equipment shed. The order for payments has been authorised by the chair and one other member. We was all town council were originally going to collect contributions from a number of councils and pay one sum contribution for the refurbishment, but HPC paid the donation directly instead. His result was no issue arising. Next one, petty cash figure incorrect uh, needs to be corrected, is the comment that was made by a member of the public. The auditor said that a full year's reconciliation of petty cash had been carried out to reconcile the brought forward balance plus reimbursements to the year, less payments for the year to the carried forward balance. The resulting figure of £500 was agreed to assist in closing balance £500. His conclusion was no issue arising, there are no errors in petty cash. Uh, four new union flags bought at a cost of £8.96 plus a union jack and the bunch is sent to John Brooks' home. Who authorised this as nothing appears on the agenda? Do HPC have possession of them? If not, who has it? It's known to have been used by the Memorial Trust. The four new union flags were physically verified. They are held in the clerk's desk drawer. The flags were purchased through Petty Cash. The financial reg section 6.5a permits the clerk to maintain a cash flow up to five for the purpose of defraying operational and other expenses. The payment was agreed to the authorised December order for payments, accounts and Petty Cash analysis and vouchers. So the documentation was there, and the conclusion from the external audit is no issue arising. Same thing again, fridge magnets. Who were these bought for, by whom? It was a cost of £13.94. The payment was agreed to the authorised December order for payments to accounts, and the petty cash analysis and vouchers. The purchase for the pantomime were used as part of the gifts, including the small bags of credit. There was a 50p charge for entry to the pantomime, which formed it for this. No issue arising again.
An invoice from Print Android for the design of a small banner sent to a resident for £18.06. Uh, the minutes note that Councillor Smith stated that as interest in the CPR sessions was high, that it would be unnecessary to spend money on advertising. Exclamation mark, exclamation mark. Uh, Councillor Smith claims about the cost, see below, the banner was for CPR training. Uh, action to be taken. If HPC had not asked the resident to work on the design, why was the council billed for this cost and claimed for by Councillor Smith, given the statement in council? Firstly, the statement in council is correct. Uh, the CPR sessions weren't advertised. Well, they were by on Facebook, uh, on local papers, on various people's own Facebook pages, and uh, that was responded to. There was no advertising actually paid for. The banner wasn't for advertising, and it was seen uh, by the external auditor that the reason for it was so that people knew where it was taking place. So it was just to hide. <laughs> no, well, they got the book. Excuse what? me, councillor. No, the, the auditor, the external auditor, actually understood it that it wasn't for advertising. It was so that people knew where the place was. Mm. Yes, but. It would be unnecessary. We've not spent money on advertising. We've spent money on a banner. You put a banner up for half a zero. Can you be blind, please? Yeah. So does that mean that all these uh, road signs, that road signs on the on the estates, that's all advertising where that road is? It's not advertising, is it? It was to explain to people where it was because people were coming from outside the area. Yeah. Wimslow style, essentially, so that they knew where it was. Because Wimslow view, sometimes people just have no idea where it is. It's a new building. But having said that, um, what happened was that it was late in the day, a banner was needed for um, people who were coming to the act uh, to Wimslow view for the CPR training. I actually paid for it and then gave John Brooks the bill and he reimbursed me from petty cash. There was nothing underhand or dodgy about it, which is, seems that that was what was um, why the investigation was looked into, I suppose. Can't think of any other reasons why you waste time doing that. For a Would you like to read out the conclusion and recommendation? Only officers and members should order goods and services to the council. I am a member of the council, council yes. and I ordered them. And I paid for them. Um, refer to the comments that were made in the, yes. uh, the past meetings. My wife, my wife, designed it on, online for me. That's why her name was included. So she's not been on the fiddle either. No, I didn't say. I didn't say anybody was on the fiddle. You implied it. Right. Well, next implied. item. Next yeah. item. Chair, why don't I just say something? Scrutiny in detail strengthens what the council does. I want to ask him that's the reason why we brought in an external auditor, Councillor Tolder, and why it cost us more money. Next item, the pantomime invoice. Uh, the problem was September to approve expenditure of up to £1,700 on a Christmas pantomime for children aged 3 to 12 years. Proposed by uh, Councillor Burgess, 5-4 with one abstention. I <coughs> don't see what that has to do with financial side. However, why was the invoice sent to Maxine Smith? So, that's been duplicated. Uh, see the recommendation for issue number one, which is on page one. Which was, no significant issues arising. However, the council should ensure that the purchase invoice is already addressed to the council. Right. Next one, the CPR training. Oh, that's been duplicated. We've got exact, is it exactly the same? Yes. Even yes. down to the explanation. Uh, Cheshire's Council invoice for full size club. Invoice costs £427.92. Invoice not clear as to what the charge is for. The results. Of the external auditor, invoice seen from CC for youth work time and agreed to the fully authorised order of payments and accounts for the fund size club. It's a summer club. 
obviously requires supervision of the children, so you support how is paid for it, as well as incremental expenditure. Uh, it does go into a lot of detail. There's, it says about the payments agreed for the count uh, Maxine Smith for materials, um, and that uh, the audit trial is not complete for the two hundred thirty-two pound ninety-six expenditure, and it's suggesting that a complete audit trail for all payments made from petty cash should be retained. Did that not come out from the auditor's inspection or? Could you just explain that one? In what sense? Oh, no. Oh. What's happened is they've got all the receipts. Right. But the difference was it came from John doing a better job of getting the receipts because it was a two stage payment to the youth services. And I can see where everybody's coming from with it. One lot of receipts was handing in for £150, and he's got a signed receipt for that. The next lot uh, has been taken out. Obviously, handed over, but no receipt was gained. All we're missing is a receipt. All we're missing is a receipt from the youth services. Right. But it was agreed at an order of payments. But it was agreed on the order of payments. That's the full amount. Yeah. Right. But the procedure is <coughs> in place now, actually. Yes. Uh, next item, the observation. Petty cash figure incorrect. Current should be £600, but is recorded as £500. <coughs> Find how and why this figure is wrong. Uh, the auditor. Petty cash has been reconciled for the entire financial period, I suppose that should be, as stated previously. There is no error in petty cash. Conclusion, no issues arising. Uh, the Panto deposit, well, that's been duplicated as well. Gone through that one. Uh, figures wrong as £75,000 transfer to Nationwide recorded but did not happen. Incorrect figures recorded in accounts. Why was this error allowed to stand? The external auditor's finding is that this is not an error as 75,000 was not transferred to Nationwide at that time due to delays in setting up a bank mandate for check signatures. This is not an error and no incorrect figures have been recorded in the statutory year and accounts of the council with regard to this transaction. The word cancelled has been clearly written on the order for payments. No issue arising. Uh, backs to Scout Group. Backs transfer made but no receipt or certificate noting full details in accounts. Uh, part of the fact that my understanding is you don't get a receipt for a PAX transfer. It shows in the bank account, I understand. Um, the auditor's findings, a £1,000 BAX payment is listed in the authorised September 8th order for payments for first and fourth scout group. And this payment represented a grant to purchase a more than was agreed to in the minutes. This is not an error. The council is enabled to make back payments through the financial regs, section 6.1. A signed confirmation of receipt of monies dated 4th of August 15 has also been agreed. Conclusion, no issues arising. Nearly there. Next one, petty cash figure, incorrect. Postage of audit at cost of £132.82 not recorded. Why was this error allowed to stand? Postage was actually £2.36. <laughs> and £130.46 related to the payment of the BT bill through the post office, which together totaled £130.82. His comment is that this is clearly stated in the petty cash analysis as separate items and the vouchers evidence this. His view, no issue arising. 12500 paid to HCWMWF by Bax appears to be John Brooks, uh, to approve the immediate award of 12500 to the Hanfield Community War Memorial Foundation. Bax transfer made, but no receipt or certificate noting full detail in accounts. Why was this error allowed to stand? And again, agreed, received with thanks confirmation of receipt and money's dated 23rd of June and signed by the Treasurer. This, his comment is, this is not an error. But again, a Bax transfer shows on the bank statement. No issue arising. Uh, petty cash expenditure of 95 pence first class postage not recorded. Recurrence, the petty cash figure is wrong and incorrect. Why was this error allowed to stand? The auditor's response the July 2015 petty cash analysis regard, records 95p for postage, and this was agreed to the actual postage receipt. This is not an error. There were two 95 pence, 95 pence postages in the month, and both are recorded and supported by receipts. 
with point no issue arising. Finally, petty cash expenditure of 25.98 on jerry cans. Uh, what was this for? Can the chair explain? Yeah. And where are they? Sorry. Uh, the jerry cans are located in the lock up garage in the paddock in the centre of Hanforth where all maintenance materials are kept. The clerk has confirmed that there are two petrol containers held there and the items were agreed to the voucher order for two new jerry cans and this petty cash analysis. Uh, the new jerry cans and the petty cash analysis for July 2015. The jerry cans are required to hold petrol for the strimmer, which is owned by the council and which is identified in the asset register. And his comment is no issue for that. Any comments from any of the councillors? I've just got a query for uh, Councillor Thompson. Um, I just wondering, wh why did you decide to audit the auditing accounts? Why did I decide? Yeah. Certain issues were raised with me by a person, and therefore I thought it wise to check. Mm -hmm. Can't hear him. <coughs> you could, could you use the microphone, please? Sure. There was issues raised by a uh, member of the public, and therefore I thought it prudent to check. And since there seem to be some issues, I raised it in council. Council therefore did agree to uh, put the matter to an external order, which was agreed, and there's the report. That's fine. So, uh, so <laughs> was this your report that you produced? What do you mean, was it my report? Did you produce this report that we just gone through? You just said it was raised by a member of the public. So the, the member of the public that should produce the documentation as well? What do you mean the documentation? The documentation, that someone gave you some documentation, I presume, with the, the, the findings on it, you know, the, um, the queries that they wanted. They raised the queries with me and we went through, with the clerk. Right. Is that okay? Well, you went through it. Didn't they? Yeah, three of us went through it. Who did you go through it with? Well, I went through it with the resident <laughs> under his freedom of information request. Correct. Right. Right. And, so then, he he and then so he's produced this documentation. Yeah. You've brought it to yeah. council. We've agreed yeah. to send it off to the auditor. Yeah. Right. <coughs> and I'm just wondering, once you've got hold of it, why, why you didn't look at it? Or did you? And did you? As a press finance well, chair, why didn't you mention about looking at the... Uh, Payments account. We yeah. had the payments of accounts out. All the documents were yeah. with the clerk. We asked for all the paperwork. And we went through yeah. those. Yeah. And we had a lot of issues. Why didn't you find those receipts? If you want to tell well, them, well, they wanted to find them, yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. And was was the was a member of public was he was he a qualified accountant or other to because it's some pretty basic that is not a question uh, applicable to the issue. Well, I think I think it you find that we've got about a dozen. I'm or sorry, all that issues. Don't get sorry on all that. Please don't say and all that to me. I will. All of this, except for one and a half, has found that there is no. Issues arising. Well, that's, that's entirely up to the auditor. And how much does it cost the council? Whatever the cost is. Would you have done it if it had been your money? I would make sure that every penny no, across that's the council. That's a straightforward question. <laughs> would, you, would you have requested this report if it had been your money? Well, it is my money. I pay my. No, uh, if you had to pay it yourself, money. would you would you put your hand in your pocket to pay for this? You go around me. I just like yes, but excuse me, I'm talking to the councillor. I'd just like to know. Oh, if I was concerned about it, yes, I would probably no, would. Good. Wouldn't you? No, I would look no, through it properly and find that there's a, there's a voucher for it, or it's 95p and that's and it's also a voucher for that as well. You'd well, it was that, uh, it's my prerogative to ask questions yes, and for council to actually raise in council. Yeah. If you, and council agreed upon it, fine. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, thank you, Councillor Smith. Um, the motion is that we agree to pay the auditor for the re-audit of the... The motion is to accept the report, I beg your pardon, uh, from the auditor regarding item 16.35.12 of the December the 13th meeting. Oh. Can I ask how much it has cost oh, us? Yes, sir, sir. Sorry. Why not? It will be on the website tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I'll look on the website. Um, okay. Can I 
have a proposal for it, please. Second. 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 Yeah. All those in favour? Against? Abstaining? <laughs> Can you give your reason for no, abstaining? No, I don't. Pardon? I will not give my reason for abstaining. Can you note that, please? Um, right, on this matter... Can I, can I just ask why you sometimes ask no, people I don't. to give reasons for abstaining? Because normally people give their reason for abstaining. Well, Councillor Smith abstained and they had them with their hands off hands. Yeah, I gave my reasons what, about the, what, what my concerns was with why we're funding this when we discussed the agenda items. Do you know that, Max? Yeah, yeah. Um, right, well, that's probably this subject though. Um, as our payments are going to reach £100,000 per year, okay, the auditor has recommended that we do take an interim audit each year. Okay, so I'll have to put that on an agenda going forward, right, okay. but just to let you know. <coughs> Will that be going to the Finance Committee first? Yeah. Yes. Uh, interim, interim. <coughs> it happens with larger councils whose expenditure goes over one hundred thousand pounds per year. Seventeen oh six eleven to produce the parish council newsletter before March the thirty first, twenty seventeen, at a maximum cost of six hundred and twenty five pounds to be distributed to all handful households and to consider the ongoing production of the, the newsletter up to a maximum of four times per year. Okay. Councillor Tolva and Councillor Sullivan. Uh, yeah, the idea is obviously it's been, a, been quite some time since there's been a Paris Council newsletter issued. Um, one of the things that I think it's in, is important is that we let the residents know what, where we're at with projects, um, things that we have achieved, so if there's any specific councillors you'd like to put in a report about something they've been involved in. Also, um, I think it's important to clarify with our residents the difference between what the parish council is responsible for and what the ward councillors are responsible for. Um, I get quite a number of people asking me stuff that I, I'm quite happy to forward on to the ward councillors, but sometimes that might delay them in getting a couple of days response. Um, so I, that was one option, but I'd like, I just think, you know, not everybody can come to the meetings. And I think it's key that we do keep that communication with the whole of Hanforth, not just the people who attend. I don't know what you wanted to say on that, Councillor. Yeah. That's exactly what I wanted to say, really. I just think that uh, we used to produce the newsletters. Not everybody thinks they're wonderful, but um, I don't think Facebook is wonderful um, as, as a means of communicating to 100% of the population. And I just think the newsletter is, you know, you can't force people to read it, but at least it's there. Any other comments from any other councillors? I'd, I'd agree with that. Not all, not all the world is uh, online. Yeah, There's exactly. lots of people who are not yeah. uh, able to get on the internet and mention that the means of seeing everything as well. Councillors, yeah. are you going to yeah. collate? Can you just wait yeah. a minute, please? Can you, are you going to collate these reports? Are we to send them through to. Well, um, we haven't discussed this yet, but maybe okay. Kerry and I would yeah. work together on producing it. Because if, you, as you just said, if councillors want to give their own report, okay, forward them to you. Uh, I don't know, would you, would you prefer them to go directly to Ashley or? I suppose if Ashley is the filing, I'll come up, as it were, and forward them on to us. I was just going to say, as, as before, we've drafted, is it four, four before, which I don't know exactly, we haven't made a post we did before. Um, I think mean, it's a great idea. Yeah, brilliant. For all, all our to support it. Good. What I would say though is that um, that when we do um, produce them, okay, we actually try and make sure that they do get delivered because the some of the delivery plans we've had in the past have fell 
far short than in fact the best of time we have been delivered is when councils have physically gone out and put them through the letterbox Actually, themselves. Actually, I did speak with Ashley about this and I said that we would have a distributor that would come in and deliver these. However, the neighbourhood plan was recently delivered and I can assure you that a number of areas were missed out because the, uh, the people delivering the leaflets couldn't get in because it's a secure block and I must have, there must have been five or six areas um, Clay Lane wasn't delivered to either, there was other areas so um, I propose that um, Ashley gets um, a list of all that needs delivering and hands it to the distributors and we can always keep some aside and do yeah. what we did with the questionnaire. Okay. It's not it's not impossible to send all around these when places. When do you want so these reports back? If you're proposing to go now. Surely, Chair, we should actually formulate uh, some sort of editorial body to, to devise it. Because, then, well, I know, I know that they're suggesting it, but it was like we, when we did it last time, you know, these sat and we did a lay, you know, worked out the layout and everything, yeah. not just oh, yeah, correlating. Yeah. 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 You're going to do, aren't you? Yeah, I'm just saying Councillor Thompson wants to... Oh, yeah. 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 I don't mind, no, I'm not. I've done the last one myself. Yeah. 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 And the reports, uh, on the reports, I'd like to just look at them as when they arise. I'll just send them through to Ashley. Yeah. What date? If you want this to go out, by the 31st of March. I'm not bothered about the date, that was carry, carry No, 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 the date, I put the date in there, in case I wanted to finish it by the end of this year, and you've got money for it as well. That was my fault putting that date in there. So if you don't want to do anything with that date, you don't have to. Just, just give us your ideas. I quite like, I quite like the idea of having it by that date. Like you say, it gives us up to the end of the year. Well, there's plenty of things to report. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I personally like that each of the councillors that represents a ward gives a report on their ward. That would be really good. Maybe that's something for the group to... Oh, we should actually decide on a working party date or something like that. Or... Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, we've got to vote on it. Um, I propose that we set aside £625. And do, does that include the distribution? Yes, yeah. that's everything. Right, okay. Artwork, printing, yeah. well, yeah, distribution. Is yeah. that one page, two page? That's a four page. Okay. Like the question. Okay. Four page. Yeah. And then obviously, do you want to keep it going as well? <laughs> Yeah. Maximum four times. Yeah. 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 So if you're happy with the whole That's thing, yeah. That's 65 as far as being ring fenced if you don't get it done by March. Yeah. Yeah, we could Otherwise, do that at the March meeting if we haven't got it done. I think that's a good idea. Thank you. Yeah. So you're All proposing, those, proposing yeah. it. Proposing. All those in favour. Thank you. 170612. This is to accept or look at three quotes supplied from the suppliers of the boundary signage. Now, previously, the council set aside £5,000 to put new signage up in Hanford. Unfortunately, that money wasn't the offence, so we have to bring it to the table again. You will have seen the quotes. Um, all I'm asking is that you. Yeah, let me finish the motion and then we'll come. Uh, so what I'm asking is for you to look at the um, quotes that we've received. Maybe we can go out and get other quotes, um, but it's open to councillors to speak. Can I just say that I have heard that from Councillor Burkwell that Cheshire is for the pain and for and the storm. Yeah, well, they said that two years ago and they still haven't done it. And when I checked with Cheshire East, they said they had no money. Well, that's not so. There's such a no six months from two years ago. Do you remember two years ago? Ashley, can you contact uh, <coughs> Councillor Burke mm -hmm. and, and ask him to clarify this before we and we'll defer this to I the think next we should week. defer this. I think we should yeah. defer the item. Yeah. I would ask if we were to go through with it, would you want to say please drive carefully through our village yes. on an additional yes. sign underneath it? Yeah. Well, 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 well,
Yeah. Well, let's have a look. Um, but we need to You've got a rough price. You've got a rough price for the time well, being. Which but is we good. need to defer it. Yeah, but we need to defer it. No, I'm and, saying, yeah. and we need information from Councillor Bergen. About these sections. I sent you that in an email. No, or was it Bergen? No, that's fine. Right. Right. Just send it an email. Yeah, okay, thank you. Um, 170630. Oh, sorry, the motion is to defer it to yes. the next yes. All those in favour? Thank you. 170613 to approve the expenditure of up to a thousand pounds for the installation of five new standard litter bins. We've all had a copy of the litter bins. We've had a recommendation from a member of the public for the spare one to go at copy sway end. Mm -hmm. Any other comments from any councillors, please? Chair, um, regarding, I've got no qualms about the litter bins being agreed. I think what we should do though is actually look at other areas within the ward, the parish, to see where they may need bins. Don't you ask them? We've asked around. Uh, these ones have been brought to my attention by right. members of the public. Well, maybe that could be an item to go into the Various other people, yeah. Yeah? yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Can I request we don't have an open top bin? No. Yeah. 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 Um, can I have a proposal to accept this expenditure, Terry? Seconded by Brian. Seconded. Brian. All those in favour? And with a note to, if you can contact with the councillors to see if they've got any items mm. that they need. And if we want to put it in the newsletter as well. Yeah, of course. 170614, motion to approve the Neighbourhood Plan Steering Group's recommendation for appointment of Kirkwells as consult consultant town planners of the neighbourhood plan group subject to requirement. Um, you've all had Kirkwell's um, documentation. Um, any comments on it? Mm -hmm. I suggest that we defer this until we know what we're going to do with the neighbourhood plan. Um, if we defer, we need, to ring we need to ring and fence the money then because... Well, that's the next question. Yeah. That's no. yes. So um, they will still, regardless of whether the Grove Village, the Garden Village is in the neighbourhood plan or not, I assume, and maybe Dr Small can tell me, if the neighbourhood plan is going ahead, because I understand that, yes, it's, it still will be going ahead and they will still need a consultant. Whether the neighbourhood plan is going ahead is a uh, matter for councillors here. We are simply your tools, the okay. steering group. I, I feel that until we find out more about it and a definitive answer instead of airy fairy comments that are being spread about by individuals and also even Cheshire Eats are what I call filibustering and not coming out with the correct. We haven't heard anything from the ward councillors. So in the meantime, yes, we can defer this motion till the next meeting, um, but we need to read. No, that's the next motion. That okay. Would be. So do you want so, to defer that one? Yes, please. To be fair, though, regardless, which is why it says subject to requirements, yeah. mm -hmm. these are the cheapest of the three quotes that we got and the most experienced in producing neighbourhood plans. We would like to use them in future, basically. So what Subject to requirement, which yeah. is what is in so yeah. the motion. So the motion basically. is that we agree <coughs> that we use Kirkwells <laughs> subject to requirement. So can I have a proposal? Yeah. Yeah. May I make a, a further comment? Could we interviewed uh, various uh, planning consultants. Kirkwells definitely seem to be the best. One of the beauties of their um, proposals are that they describe various stages and are prepared to charge us separately for okay, each okay. stage. Okay. And, and we like that idea. And uh, we can take up further stages as and when required. Okay. We, we, we also have to bear in mind, and no, I have to say this, that we are going to apply for a grant from um, my community. And I'd like to commend 
the old parish clerk because he stopped us making a very fundamental mistake recently. And that was we were going to apply to my community uh, for a grant of £9,000. And then as we were about to press the button to submit the grant application, it was pointed out by Ashley that if we did that, we would either lose the parish council's contribution for this financial year, or we would lose the uh, my community contribution because we couldn't possibly spend both sums of money uh, in what remains of the financial year. Let me do. So, the motion that we're approving now is that we use Kirkwells. Can I have a proposal? Subject to because it is subject to requirements. Can I have a proposal for it, please? Second. Thank you. All those in favour of using Kirkwell? Thank you. 170615. To earmark £5,700 of allocated funds from the neighbourhood plan budget from the current financial year to be spent on town planning consultancy costs placed into reserve and rolled over to the next financial year as per financial regulation 3.5. Any comments on that please? Can you bring the it then please? Uh, the motion is uh, will you mark it and use it as and when? Well, as and when, it's as and when isn't it? Okay. So. Can I have a proposal please? Second up. All those in favour? Thank you. 170616. To receive a request from Haynes, that's the um, Model Engineering Society, for Hanforth Parish Council support over lease of the pavilion. And I'm going to hand this motion over to Councillor Smith, as he's the one that's been. Uh, speaking to you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, HMES has been uh, in the park now for I think it's eight, eight years. Um, uh, when they were first presented with the pavilion eight years ago, uh, my understanding is that George Broughton said, everything inside there is down to you. Uh, you look after it. In that time, they've been waiting for a, uh, a lease to be agreed. Uh, for for their for their group. Once they've got a lease, they can then apply for grants. If there's no lease, then it's difficult for them to be able to apply for any sort of grants. Uh, they have done a lot of work themselves, uh, which, if you had to value it and uh, pay for it yourself, would cost many thousands. I feel, uh, but by using their expertise, they've been able to uh, do it themselves. Um, I think that to a degree, I think they should be offered an apology uh, from ourselves because in the past they've not been uh, given all the full information of what's been agreed or proposed. Um, by whom? Pardon? By whom? I tell us by whom? Well, let me finish. Um, on occasions, there have been meetings which have been held which have been supposedly. Uh, as Councillor Burke will put it, um, we have held up to now two exploratory informal meetings with some members of the Parish Council, some members of the Friends of Merritt Road Park, and with Cheshire East Office and the portfolio holder. As these have been informal meetings involving only, involving only elected members, so I don't know how that was going to be the Friends of Merritt Road Park being there, no official minutes have been taken or issued. No decisions have been or can be taken at these meetings. Well. I found an email following that meeting with a list of actions which were agreed, such as confirm that planning permission to use the pavilion as a workshop does not exist, Cheshire East Council. Provide an estimation of maintenance costs for the pavilion. Contact HMES with an update regarding the possibility of a management committee having operational control of the pavilion and any future lease enforcing the shared use of the pavilion to ascertain their views. Uh, Councillor Topping, George Broughton, and representative of Parks, Legal and Assets within the HCC to meet prior to the next meeting to discuss and agree a strategy in regards to the pavilion's management and use. Representatives have had to submit a wish list in respect of the pavilion to CEC for consideration prior to the next meeting. One of the other items which uh, Councillor Burkle has uh, another email that he's, he's sent, 
um, was to Lee Beckett, who uh, I know that HMES have been uh, speaking with him to try and get this lease. Um, Lee, further to the meeting, etc. Uh, the HMES group should be asked to leave Merritt Road Park. The meeting concluded with you to contact legal to advise on the best course of action to bring about this by term of notice. Since then we have heard nothing, can I ask who you contacted in legal? As officers there seem to change constantly. And what advice is to bring about a satisfactory conclusion to this problem by removing this organisation from our park? Now, I've actually asked Councillor Burkill for copies, because the copies of any documentation, uh, and I asked all the other councillors who were, uh, I believe, at that meeting, uh, for information on what was agreed at those two meetings, and no documentation came back. They said a similar sort of thing to that which Councillor Burkill has said there, when in fact there was documentation, there were actions, there were. Uh, notes and taken. Um, another meeting was held, a follow-up meeting to that, which uh, again we were told wasn't an official HPC meeting. However, oh no, so that, they, that no one was there in their official uh, capacity as ward councillors or Hanford Parish councillors. However, the agenda for that meeting on the 18th of February shows that uh, the wish list was from Hanforth representatives is as discussed and agreed by representatives from Friends of Merritt Park, Hanforth Parish Council and Hanforth Ward Councillors. The wish list says all the facilities of the pavilion, main hall, kitchen, changing rooms, toilets and storeroom should be available for use by the whole community. Items should only be stored in areas specifically designated for that purpose. The pavilion should not be used as a workshop. That in my book seems to exclude what HMES do. Um, operating days now as a monorail to be reviewed and agreed to satisfy all parties. Um, the HMES, their agreement with Cheshire East is that they are only sole occupancy. They are not allowed to share it. However, at that meeting on the 22nd of June uh, 2015, uh, they brought with themselves uh, documentation they brought uh, drawings showing that they're quite happy to move out of a large portion of the building in order that other people, the whole of Hanforth, if they're saying, can use it. They don't need it all, they've said that, but they need the planning permission. They need to be able to get out. They have refused in the past, uh, I'm sorry, they've been accused in the past of refusing to allow the toilets to be used. Unfortunately, toilets that they have had repaired themselves have been vandalised within, I think it was a day, was it? In one day. Yeah, the they, day. yeah. They, they, they actually you know, made good an external toilet so that everyone used. And it was vandalised the same Trashed. day. Trashed completely. Um, they have made the toilets available for the use on uh, Hanforth Gala or Mayfest without apparently any complaints. Um, they have been accused in the past of uh, not making any contribution to the Friends of the Mirror Road Park, financial contribution. Well, I'd ask, have they asked Friends of the Mirror Road Park for a contribution? They have an organisation there and Councillor, you, you didn't present any of this stuff for us to consider in detail. The, the so motion, I've only just found it today. The, the motion on the agenda is to receive a request, mm. not to talk about the request. If you look, I'm, I'm giving the reason for my request. The request no, is that... The request is for hands. We can yes. either... If, if they haven't sent us a request, we can't force them to send us a request. That was issued, wasn't it? So the email. email. Yeah. So there was an email sent out with their request. Or is that another email that hasn't been received? Yeah, I think it's the email. It's in the agenda pack. Yes, it's on the agenda. So it has been issued. I have to receive it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the HMES take it up. I think approximately 30 days to respond. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
they provide for children who have both every year, and grandparents and grandchildren. And you should see their visitors' book. It has comments from far afield saying how people have enjoyed it. I believe that it's an asset to handful. I believe that we should endeavour to get them that lease. Yeah, yeah. Or, and they can hopefully stay and remain to be an asset to have for. Okay. But what about the what about the um, approval the the, the uh, what's the word I'm looking for? When when we had a meeting in June of twenty fifteen, yes. Following that, John wrote, wrote an email to Bill. Sorry, could you just be quiet at the back there, please? John Brooks. John Brooks sent an email to yes. George Broughton of Cheshire East yes. saying that it was the view of the Parish Council to support the application by HMES for a lease. So why do we need to do this? We've already done it. Because that didn't go to the full council. What full council? This. No, but it went to Cheshire East. It That's went to Cheshire East, yes. As, and as what a, actually happened, I believe, as, as is that yes, and George Broughton, I believe, um, was asked on his opinion, and he said, yeah, that's fine, that's good. Um, but he was asked what he thought with the blocker on the lease not being uh, issued by Cheshire East. Remarked that uh, I believe that uh, the ward councillors are not in favour of this well, lease. The, the, the difficulty for the lease is that there are covenants on the, on the park. Not that it take eight years to sort out, councillor. Well, covenants are just forever. Oh, okay. yes. Can I just uh, stop you there a second? I'll read you the covenant. This is what the covenant states. Okay. That the council will not permit or suffer any buildings or buildings to be erected on the land hereby conveyed, which may be deemed a public nuisance or private loans, nor permit or suffer the same land or any buildings to be erected thereupon to be used for the purpose of sale of spiritus malt or other liquors. Sale of what? Spiritus malt. Spiritus malt. Yeah, or other liquor, nor the purpose of carrying on any noisy or offensive trade or business, or for any purpose, other purpose, to the nuisance or annoyance of the inhabitants of any adjoining or neighbouring messages or dwelling houses. That's a covenant. Right. And the problem okay. with his, is, in this case, is that their lease, in, in the situation at the moment, is that there. That, that covenant is active still. Right. Okay. Yeah, the covenant exists. It exists. Right. right. So therefore, right. until um, until Cheshire East resolves with the public, the local people. How how so how recently have you spoken with Cheshire East about this? Have I spoken with Cheshire? Yeah. I've not spoken. To, I've been to some of the meetings. I will say that I've been to some of the meetings that discussed them. Um, the park and the trainmen, and the trainmen know that. Um, and I note that it was agreed with Councillor Topping, who was the, um, the portfolio holder at the, the time, that things would move forward. And uh, the railway men did agree that they would be quite willing to share the site. Um, with the Friends of Meriton Road Park or any other group for that matter. Part of the original agreement, I believe, which um, uh, <coughs> they have actually agreed with beforehand, is that they should, that the Friends of Meriton Road Park did have access to the building to hold their meetings. Which is what. I'm going to say, let me finish. Okay. Today, I don't think they've ever held a meeting because they can't get in. Okay? No. no. Right, so therefore you already... No, no, no. In, in our minutes, in our um, uh, early minutes, and it still stands up today. Well, yeah, I think because he's, he's uh, Councillor Thompson has uh, directed just, the question. I've directed it to him, oh, that's right. Okay, perhaps we'll just answer the question. Yeah, please. The, the, the answer to that is that they're allowed 12 meetings per year of two hours of an evening and when the early friends of the park before the latest friends of the park as we consider them and the early friends of the park came to the meetings said if you want to make a brew up shelf and everything else they only came once 
there's insufficient heating in the building, there's a, an insufficient electric supply to provide any form of heating, there's no gas, and you're not allowed gas in that building anyway. Um, so if you wanted to hold 12 meetings a year, for two hours, once a month, we'll, we'll make it available for you to hold the meetings. And we've always had that. What's and the council sharing the actual property. You sorry? Just, before. Uh, council already that, know that. You should know that. I, well, I remember what happened after that meeting. What meeting? Which meeting? With, after council topping, the meeting with, that was held with council topping. Oh, no, no, no. You changed your tune. You oh, changed the tune. So you excuse, excuse me. me. Excuse no, me, no, excuse no. me council. Yeah. What? Council, the council topping meeting, that was in February. And uh, following that meeting, it was, uh, and this is from Council Topping, yeah. that he requested, uh, because you've actually, you actually, uh, I believe, put in front of Council Topping your proposals yes. at that meeting in February, and where they said we're happy to share the building, which Council Topping was happy about, and he said, look into this, look at the lease, but then also requested Friends of Merton Road Park to come up with a business plan for what they wanted to do, because they were asking for it to be used um, as a ca they wanted a cafe in the pavilion mm -hmm. and toilets to be open to the public. And That's Councillor right. Topping said there will be no cafe in the pavilion. And he also said, and, and, and it was the uh, answer officer who said that there is no budget for toilets to be uh, no provided. No toilets in park. Big pardon. No toilets. Yes, that's what the council said. Excuse me. Let me finish, place. please. Let me finish. Sorry, will you be quiet, please? Please, please, will you be quiet? And a death trap. No, I won't, shush. Will you, will you let me finish, please? You let know, other people speak. Who? Uh, excuse me, can you give me your name first? Beryl Chapman. And what you is your me? comment, as long as it's not derogatory? The May Fest, it was disgusting, that place. It was a death trap. There was nails in wood above you when you wanted to go to the toilet. There was no toilet seat, there was no toilet paper. And I told uh, Barry Burkle about it. I sent him photographs. The floor was filthy. The soap was yellow and cracked. It is not fit. Excuse me. Right. It isn't fit for people. Right. And we should have a say in this, the people that live in the area. Right, well, if you had a lease on that property, you would have a say in it. But you don't have a lease on that property. It was given that, excuse me, it was, they were, they were allowed it. And I know that in the past, Friends of Mary Road Park have requested, we'd like to use the toilets for this uh, coming up Mayfest or um, um, gala. And so what you want is not only for them to allow you into the building that they're leasing, but also to tidy the toilets up for you. Surely wouldn't the people who were administering that event... They were filthy. Right. And they Wait, you're not listening to me. You you're not listening in. to me. Well, why didn't the people from Friends of Mary Road Park... I am what? listening to you. Well, why didn't the Friends Don't of Mary Road Park... Don't bombast me. Bombast you? Yes. No, I'm not going to correct. Right. Excuse me. Oh, that's oh, enough. That's oh, enough. What did you say? That is just heard. I just want to note it, please. Please note it. I said that that's right. all I'm fit for. Thank you. That building is right. not can we people. Can we move on? And we please? should have a Will say in it. Point? Can I have a copy of that that you've got there? I'll give you a Where copy. Where did you get that from? Uh, that's private. What no, I will not say. No. I will give you a copy. Excuse me. I will give you a copy. You you can't can't you that. That. I will give you a copy of the actual. I want to copy of that. You will get a copy of that particular section. No, where do you get it from? Well, that's private. <laughs> you, can't, you can't put something in an open meeting. So why haven't you transcribed? Why why I will give you a copy of the actual quote that's been sent to me. So and who so sent it? To well, you? that's my private view. It isn't. It you're, is. you're here to represent the public. Yes, and, and I'm, here. I'm actually bound by their confidentiality. Thank you very much. Right, doesn't apply. Okay. No, sorry, Mrs. Well, Walsh. Does it uh, um, can I just? I'm, I'm going to just ask. I'm just going to ask that you can reply to Wen Haynes. Have you got anything to add before we take a vote on this? And I'll come back to you before the motion is Thank agreed. You. Thank you. When we first approached Macclesfield Council, uh, we approached it through Paddy Burkle. Um, he was approached and asked of his opinion of running a miniature railway in the park and um, the building which was in a condemned state 
Um, I believe at the time, and that was said in meetings, that um, they were having difficulty raising the funds to have it removed. Uh, that's eight, nine years ago. And he was in all, all in favour of thought it was an admirable idea. And um, as soon as we could um, take possession and get us to go in in the park, they would look into a lease. That's how it started eight years ago. And um, it moved by various people, not the majority of people in handfuls who've always supported us. Um, only the other day, a lady asked, um, was there any toilets? And we said, yes, if you don't know, advance it. And we're quite happy to let this be known. When we're in, um, in the building, the toilets are available to anybody to wish to use it. There are no other toilets in the whole of Hanford. Privately, you might use a restaurant, or otherwise it's not public toilet anywhere. Okay, thank you. Could, could I respond to the lady there? That when we start the event, the toilets are in Sorry, you can't respond to a member of the public. Make a comment. Just wait, because I want to go to Mrs. Walsh. I did say she could answer. Yeah, originally, in the original heads of terms document, which we have a copy of, Banks of Merrington Road Park were to be allowed the regular monthly meetings, 12 a year, but also eight events a year, and it was for the use of the building, not just the toilet. Yeah, I've never seen that. I've got a copy of it. Oh, I've seen it. Um, and I'm speaking with um, members of HMES, um, one is no longer a member, and um, we have been to many meetings, um, one of the meetings that, that Councillor Smith referred to uh, earlier was obviously a meeting that was held at Cheshire East Council, which none of us, well, Friends of Merriton Road Park. Yeah. The two meetings were here meeting. yeah, at the Health Health Youth Centre. Yeah, we had one meeting where um, Ms. Uh, Councillor Topping was present, and the outcome of that meeting was that we all thought we were moving forward together, and that the idea would be if we all worked together, and the pavilion was managed by a management team which could be made up of parish councillors, Cheshire East, members of the public that had an interest in that place. Now, we've never been given any minutes of that meeting. I've got a minutes. There seems minutes. to be a lot Just of discrepancies over we what, was, what was being allowed with the pavilion and the use of the park that we could have the tracks on. Friends of Merriton Road have never said, we want to train men out. We have tried for a number of years to come to an amicable solution. Now we were told that the, the lease on the pavilion, the HMAS wanted a long lease on the pavilion so that we could get funding for the extension that they wanted to do on it. That is their business. But the outcome of the meeting with there were representatives from HMES there, as well as councillors, some of friends in Merriton Road Park. We did a one-to-one -one survey, which we have the figures for, and the, the people in Hanfor, and predominantly the park users, are 97.5% in favour of the pavilion having shared use. Now, that can't, that, can, that can't happen if it's being used as a, sorry, as, a, as, a, as a fabrication workshop where there's welding and cutting and all the other things going on in there. I also Can have, I just ask you, um, Mrs Walsh, if you don't mind, it's an answer to a query of mine. What would you want to use the pavilion for? We don't want to use it just as a group. We've been doing surveys and asking the park users and the, the rest of the community in Hanford who say they would like the pavilion, not only HMES to be able to use it. Um, but what it, would they want to use it for? It's not it's, things, it's in no fit state. Well, I, I can't, no, I know it's in no fit so, state now. And I, that leads me to some of the point I was just about to make. But I have an email, a copy of an email, that was sent down from um, a 
Cheshire East officer a while ago stating that those public those toilets are not fit for public use. But that's because so the, the again, officer has said that they will not be opening toilets in Hampton in, in Mary Road Park. So they're, they're there and you can use them at your own risk, but they will not have the council sanction. I think, I think so, the, the point I'm trying to make is that there's a lot of things that Council Smith that you were stating before that are, that are wrong. And I think really, there's, there's a lot of history here with meetings and different things that have gone on. Not only with the Fence of Meriton, but with residents surrounding the park and a lot of the other park users. And I say, and, and so, which is what I brought up in public forum. It's about seven or eight minutes now. I know. I can provide okay. copies Thank of you. documentation I, I really that, stating that what I, I, I say is Mr. Robinson was going to yeah. respond to a comment that was And I think you should have heard yeah. On and then we're going to take a, a note on uh, this. We, we endeavoured to make the toilets in a presentable manner. Prior to the event, the lady only question, I think we're in a, a presentable state. We cannot be held responsible for the public trucking toilets. Okay. Uh, as regards the uh, covenant, we are perfectly aware of, of the covenant, uh, which means the council has brought the covenant by voting the voting in the first place. Um, it's also, I'd uh, like to point out, it does include other things, including the banning of sale of alcohol, yeah, which I've, that's I've that's seen the same part. Uh, uh, and, and, uh, uh, yeah, so that, that's been broken again. Mm -hmm. So I think people are You're saying apples have been sold in the pavilion? In the Mayfest. In the Mayfest. Mm -hmm. the Mayfest yeah. if it, it, yeah. the there's a ban on the sale of alcohol within the farm. That's part of the government. Uh, that is, that is broken quite frequently. I have no objection to it. Thank you. We're now at 9.30. Um, the building, I'd really true. like 1706.16. I'd like us. Um, the proposal is that we support Haynes over the granting of the lease. Yeah, the proposal is to receive a request. To receive a request, which we have. So we have that. <laughs> I'd like to, <laughs> like to propose an amendment to the motion. Go on. No, you can't do that you. substantively. What are you going to do? Receive a request. The motion is that we vote on it to support the you have to advertise to enable the agenda to the public. No, really. It's just a point of having an agenda. You do have to be correct to advertise in terms. To receive a request from the expanse for support to police department. Just to receive. Not to support. To receive. Accepting that. Right, okay. Um, I'm going to defer this item to the next meeting. Um, I will be asking Haynes and friends of my email call to give us evidence of what's been discussed tonight. Uh, Ashley, can you contact yeah. the relevant people, please? Thank you. 170617 uh, notices and correspondence. But there hasn't been any more. It's in close. Well, the battery, I think, nearly. No, it's actually it's still going. See, it's the clicker. Still recording. The battery light's gone off. Um, I'll just walk that on back up. Yeah.